<clears throat> Alrighty, fellas. Good morning, good morning. Whoever said another 10 minute intro, you're a genius. You figured out how to make me do shorter stream intros. The inner contrarian in me just can't, can't handle that. What's up, guys? Good morning. My name's Petrowski. How are we doing today? We have some fun stuff planned for the day. I am waking up super early for me. I've got a huge thing on the GTL, guys. Are you ready? Are you excited? Are you here for it? 3.2 mil. A shiny flipped. You, the days where you wake up and you see a shiny flip, uh, it's some of the best days. It gets you immediately in a good mood. You love to see it. So our cash stack is going to be saved, okay? Our cash stack will be saved. We're going to go ahead and teleport back to the PC. We're going to be EV training that advanced gym rerun team that I've been working on. We'll go over that in some good detail. Um, the Cinequil, the double squirtles. We had a rebreathe water spout from scratch. Diano, coughing, Togepi, etc. And today's stream is sponsored by Factor, which we'll get into more in a split second. But if you want some quick, healthy, nicely chef created meals, there should be a link in the description for that. Um, so yeah, give me one sec. We're going to jump into things. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and actually collect this sock, though. There we go. 3.2 up to 4.6 that feels so relieving after being at less than two mil for quite a little bit you know i get this really quick question a lot it's a really easy one to answer a lot of people ask how do i rename my boxes you click on the box and then you click you just left click this that's it they did change it like over the past six to eight months so i understand you know it's they changed it but it's a good question there you go that's, that, that's how you do it that's it that's simple this is an interesting price check. Someone paid the channel points and sent this over to me to price check. I get why you asked me to price check this, man. This is an interesting one. This is a good request. Uh, before we do that, one one quick question. Uh, hey, Petrowski, new player here. Do you think it's worth starting playing Pokemon now? Is Pokemon a welcoming game for someone totally new? Yes. In my opinion, extremely so. I think, like, unironically, I think Pokemon is somehow manages to be one of the best games for new players because i think people are familiar with the pokemon franchise and familiar with some of the mechanics um and then also one of the best games for end game players i feel like if anything pokemon is tough for middle game players i think a lot of people quit in the middle game because they kind of complete all the storylines and if you don't set your own goals you don't have a direct path that's probably the main you know there's always gonna be good and bad um not that it's really bad but you can't have, can't be perfect at everything i think pokemon is phenomenal for new players and phenomenal for end game players and then doesn't really give enough guidance for that middle of the pack player and some people just complete all the storylines and then quit and you have to set your own goals I say it every single day, I feel like, on stream now. Uh, but I always compare it to, like, classic, like, old Minecraft. If you played Minecraft back in, like, Alpha or Beta, and you could play a long time and, like, create ideas to build things and create goals, like, you're probably going to love Pokemon. It's probably going to be, like, the perfect game for you. But you have to create goals to push you through mid-game to get you to end game. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, this was also open from a mysterious ball. Wow. Okay, that doesn't change the price, but it's very cool to know. Um, that's wild, dude. What a Pokemon. I would try to get an accurate price check on this for you. The fact that it's male, dude, you really, you really lucked out by it coming out male. I'm not going to lie. The fact that it's male is insane. You might even want to just, dude, you might want to actually just EV train this and sell it as a Mamoswine. Like just sell it as a competitive Pokemon. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't have Ice Shard, right? I'm pretty sure Ice Shard's an egg move for Mamoswine. That's kind of brutal. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Um... Because it ne definitely needs Ice Shard. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm totally wrong. But I totally thought Ice Shard was an egg move. Uh, no, you're... Oh, wow. You're totally good. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. The way that I would price check something like this is going field egg group, male. And then I would start by doing like 30 plus in every stat. And just ignoring the 31s or whatever and just see what comes up. Sort by cheapest, male, field. So we get like six times 30, obviously not comparable. Um, dude, let's four, we got four times 31, but one of them is special attack, which makes it less relevant. This is pretty comparable, I feel like. This is pretty comparable, this Blitzel, 500k. Does it have a, has hidden ability access? I don't know if that'll super matter. You could also just sell this as a swine up or mammoth swine, like I said, like a pilo swine. Like that might be worth it, honestly. I feel, I feel like you make more if you sell this. This is one of those rare things where, like, Mamoswine and Piloswine are both desired Pokemon. This thing is Naughty Nature, which is usable. I would actually not sell this as a breeder. Yeah, I would not sell this as a breeder, which is very... I wouldn't normally say that. Um, I think this is worth to sell as a, as a Piloswine slash Mamoswine. 
So maybe even then, maybe you don't EV train it actually, because I'm pretty sure Piloswine wants more defensive EVs, where Mammoth Swine's gonna want more offensive. So Wow, okay. You're really you're really worth it's a great price check. So final answer, you have to understand how you would what's your target audience when you sell me. I would sell this as a Mammo Swine slash Piloswine UT, which UT means untrained, which means it's competitive ready. It just needs to be EV trained to the person's liking. So let's see what what that might go for. So here's my new method that I'm going to price you. I'm going to ignore special attacks. It's not relevant as a as a Mammoth Swine Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to do 28 plus in every stat. And 31 speed is relevant though. And then I'm going to sort through to find like lonely, naughty, some sort of, you know, plus attack nature or whatever. Like this is kind of the most comparable at 288k, but once again, way too cheap. Not worth selling it for that price. Naive, adamant. Looking for three times. Actually, well, wait a minute though. I'm glad I price checked this because... With this logic in mind, 175k, that's gentle though, lonely. With this logic in mind, I don't know if I would sell it as a, as a mammoth swine. Dude, now I'm changing up my own strategy. Let's go back to selling it as a breeder and see how that looks. Dude, if I were you, I might actually, yeah, I might go for something like this. I might actually copy this Eevee's price check, to, but it's alpha. I would probably go 550k on this. What did that, what did that Zeb Striker cost actually? Let's, um... Or that Blitzel. That's probably the most comparable. You probably just undercut that. It was like this. Okay, final answer. This is a very difficult pressure. I, I appreciate this request. I would probably go... 4998. I would just undercut this Blaziken. I would go 4998 on this. This is a great open. You open this from a great ball, dude? Yeah, I would go 499... 4998,000 Pokemon, if that makes sense. 498... 499... 498k. Um... So from a mysterious great ball, you made like what? How much profit on this? Don't gamble. It's not, don't do, this is not, you'll not have this happen. You'll lose money. Um, but man, talk about like a 370k profit or 470k profit or whatever. That's phenomenal, man. Nice, nice, nice Pokemon. Okay, enough stumbling around with a price check. Let's go ahead and put our Pokemon away and get out our gym run team and start EV training and get some cool locations. Let me double check how I need to EV train. I'm pretty sure a couple of these need 252 special attack, 252 speed. Like the, yeah. The, both Blastoises, both Blastoises, a Typhlosion, and a Togekiss all need. Oh, and the Hydreigon kind of actually, and the Hydreigon actually. Okay, yeah. So okay, yes, all six of these Pokemon need 252 Speed EVs. Five of them need Special Attack. This ought to be a pretty easy. Like I thought, I thought it would be more complicated of an EV training process, but this actually should be pretty guaranteed. Yeah, so all five of these Pokemon just need special attack and speed. That makes things so much simpler. I thought it was going to be way more complicated. That's actually so nice. So yeah, something important is that I'm trying to look for EV training spots that also give me really good shinies. That's something I really care about here because just because I am mentally, I'm so dry, you know, I'm 41k or whatever. I understand that logically the math doesn't really matter. If you get a shadow, it's always one of 30k roll. I know, I know, I get it, right? But mentally, if I understand, oh, mentally, I'm going to feel bad if I get a shitty shiny from EV training after doing this many single encounters, um, I'm going to try to do what I can to not feel shitty. You know, I'm trying to work around that, right? So let's go ahead and go do, um, I think we could just go to the special attack spot. I think it's up here at like Flaffy and Girafferig, which is so, 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 so good. So that's an easy peasy one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this spot is like actually, this spot is like probably one of the best new, there's my reamplifier. One of the best new like EV training spots in the entire game from Johto. It's so insane. I'm pretty sure this spot is times five hordes of Flaffy and Girafferig. Two incredible shinies close to a PC. And it's, yeah, 10 special attack EVs per horde. That's so good. Like this, this spot is so ridiculously good as a shot dancing spot, as an EV training spot, everything, dude. Um, this spot is phenomenal. No shot, Danny. No shot, dude. You just whispered me this. I got this two hours after applying to Team Mister. Dude, you gotta change. You gotta go get your application, and and add this shiny to your list. Oh, and it's. Wait, this is usable. Safari caught shiny Kangaskhan. The odds of encountering this are insane. The odds of being able to catch it are insane. And then on top of all of that. It's 25 plus attack, 31 speed, naughty nature. No shot, dude. That is, 
That is one of the craziest wild caught. That's one of the craziest safari shinies. One of the craziest wild caught shinies. That's insane, dude. Congratulations, man. That's literally nuts. Okay, we're talking about ice type teams. And I actually have a lot of experience putting together ice type teams. Um, thanks for the raid, Hokey. What's up, dude? Number one tip for ice type for, I guess, snow teams and, and NU in Pokemon nowadays. Obama Snow is bad. Don't use him. I've tried, I have tried so many sets, so many different builds. I have really tried to make him work. I've never been able to do it. I think he's just, he's always a liability. He's always the weakest member of the team. He's not good. Don't do it. Vanillix is the strongest ice type in NU. Maybe one of the strongest in Pokemon. He's phenomenal. Vanillix is actually so good. Um, I'm a huge fan of, I think I went, I don't know if I went Timid Choice Scarf or modest choice scarf but i'm a huge fan of choice scarf vanilla it's having that speed is huge uh you do so much damage uh you go snow warning ability which allows you to set up snow when you come in and you just spam blizzard almost the almost always the only move you click on this pokemon is blizzard it's it's insane um it might even be worth to have sheer cold on this pokemon honestly to have that which is, it sounds insane um but like, you just don't need the other move slots like I think I've clicked Water Pulse maybe once, or like I, I almost all it's almost always Blizzard, or maybe Signal Beam, but I almost, I almost always I think it gets Flash Cannon as well, which is neat. But like you almost always click. Oh yeah, okay, moves are banned. I've been watching too much VGC content. Okay, sorry guys. Uh yeah, you can't run Sheer Cold. Apologies. Um, that's hilarious. Blizzard. You basically this Pokemon is basically just summon it. You you click Blizzard. That's it. You just click Blizzard. It's so good. It's so insane to be able to come in. Um, spam 100% accuracy, blizzards in snow. It's 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 your best ice type Pokemon by far. Uh, next up, I haven't played around him enough, but I feel like Bear Tick is probably one of your better options now that he has now that he has Snowplow. And Bear Tick, if you can fix his speed, is kind of a monster. Look at this, 80 plus defenses, 130 attack. That's good. Uh, Aqua Jet is going to be going to get Ice Shard. I mean, you want the priority Ice type probably more if you can get that, but. Um, yeah, this Pokemon is going to be a menace. This Pokemon, see, close combat. You just run, like, close combat. Um, Icicle Crash, Aqua Jet, and then some other fourth coverage move could be dependent. You could run Aerial Ace, depending on what you want to, what you want to bring in. Earthquake, you probably go Earthquake, for sure. Um, can I get SD, actually? That'd be something to consider. It can. You can do SD. Bear Tick is kind of like uh, it's very similar to Machamp in the way it functions and the stats and everything. It's like Ice type. It's like Ice type Machamp, which is worse <laughs> because yeah, just just worse. But yeah, Bear Tick's a very cool Pokemon. What are some other good Ice type? I've ran I've ran um, Snow teams and Ice teams in the past. I'm trying to think. I feel like one. I think I ran Houndoom. I believe in my is that what is that what I'm remembering correctly? I feel like I ran Houndoom in my Ice team. But I can't even explain exactly why off the top of my head. I don't remember why you would do. I don't know. If, I don't even know if that's true or why you would do that. Um, but you would need something nowadays. Let's check the NU tier list. You would have to run something. You probably need some sort of EQ Dodger. Um, you probably just run Rotom. <laughs> like it's just so good. You probably just run Rotom. Really boring answer. You probably just run Rotom on your Ice Team. You don't want to over flood your team with Ice types. You could run. So the cool thing about Frostlass being meta right now is that. Uh, could you really trick it? Probably not if they see your team preview. But some people might just see Frostlass and not think you're an Ice Time. I actually. So I use Frostlass on my ice team as a choice specs special attacker this catches people so off guard it's ridiculous um if you're on a hail team a snow team yeah you can run the the destiny bond focus sash spikes frost last set and that's really annoying that's really good for like random teams but for ice setting teams and for snow teams i was a huge fan of like i would run snow cloak choice specs and then you do like shadow ball uh ice beam blizzard this thing this thing can do damage People don't realize um, 80 special attack is kind of low, but with specs, maybe I'm just fucking speaking on my ass. This is why you don't ask me for PvP advice. I I, I thought Frostlass was one of the best performers on my team. It gets a, a shocking amount of moves. It gets Thunderbolt. Um, unironically, this was like specs. Frostlass is one of my most powerful Pokemon on my ice team, which probably just shows to how low the power was on that ice team. But um. I was a fan of, of Choice Specs Frostlass personally, but that's hopefully that answers a bunch of ice type. I actually, I might have done a video in the past specifically covering ice type teams because I used to really want to figure out how to build a good ice team in, in NU and Pokemon.
Here's our Cyndaquil evolution. Been a while since I've seen a Pokemon evolution. Honestly, kind of comfy. Uh, Petralski, you should tell the creators of the game to add Clan Wars. It'll be fire. We have a, there's a big team tournament every year that like decides what's the best PvP team. And there's a PvP tournament. Sorry, there's a team tournament every month. And there's a big one at the end of the year if you like place well. Um, did you have something else in mind? Or what do you mean? I guess I could see it'd be kind of interesting. I, I would, it'd be kind of interesting to see like a team leaderboard. And what I mean by that is, um, what Pokemon is this for? It would be kind of cool to see if, imagine if a team Mr. member just got placed against like a team Lyle member in like solo queue PVP, like matchmaking sign up, right? And then like, imagine if there was a separate leaderboard for team, for like t a team based on how everybody in their team performed, if that makes sense, against other teams. That would be kind of neat. That would be that would be that would be like really cool bragging rights. That would make it so those games on the on the ladder are way more high stakes. And so that like maybe like your teammates would all come watch and all come like root for you. That's kind of a neat idea. And, like kind of keep points. Other than that, I'm not sure exactly what people would want in terms of like a, a clan war system. Because we do have team tournaments every month. And then like a, a crowning of the best PvP team in the game. Speaking of PvP, dude, one I was telling Casey this recently. One of the coolest things i've ever done in a video this sounds very self glazy but i just got lucky in a lot of ways but it was a, it was a gamble it was a risk um one of the coolest things i've ever done in a video was in my pokemon iceberg video i talked about frags right and i said like hey man frags is like the best pvp player of all time probably historically in pokemon um if you don't believe me check the leaderboard right now as you're watching this video and he's probably ranked he's probably like top 10 in some pvp format and sure enough i get so many comments of people being like holy shit frags is like rank 8 right now in ou um it's it's this he is so good he so he consistently plays all the time uh sweet for you as well i don't really know them i know the name but i don't know them as well but i see them in a couple formats um i think for i don't think frags plays uu i think he plays nu though let's see where he's at on the or maybe randoms but the fact that he like right now, it's just so it's just so ends up being so perfect. Like he's top, he's rank eight right now. It's so good. I don't see him on NU. Maybe he's not playing right now because of stall format. See the ghost. Any more frags placements? Did I miss him? Franco. Do. I'm not seeing it. Maybe randoms. He's at least top ten OU, which is cool. I guess I guess he's you know he's, he's rank eight and only one format Ugh, not bad I guess not bad but I don't know I think it's super super cool um if you check OU ladder he's almost always there dude I've been experimenting in PvP and Rose Raid is underrated I super believe it dude it's got technician hidden power crazy strong leaf storm that KOs Garchomp and Blistor really that would be really surprising to me uh, it gets a lot of people run hidden power ice on it as well to hit to OKO those I mean like you said Garchomp and Blistor both turbo weak to ice types um and then toxic spites on top of it dude roserade i'm sure is a phenomenal just hyper offensive option it's it is it is a very underrated pokemon that 125 special attack stat dude a comp with 90 speed 90 speeds is a little awkward i wish it was like 100 or 110 if this thing was like 100 or 110 it would just be phenomenal i think it's like uu it goes back and forth between uu and ou sometimes or historically has it may it may i think it's probably been in it probably has been in UU for quite a while at this point, though, but it used to go back and forth for a while. It's a fantastic Pokemon, honestly. Great spikes, yeah. Spikes and Toxic Spikes. And it, absor it absorbs Toxic Spikes, right? From the opponent. So I'm pretty sure it's Poison type and it's grounded. So it absorbs opponent's Toxic Spikes as well, if that's something you're worried about. Um, it's phenomenal, dude. Zapdos price is insane right now. Zapdos month was, I guess it's been like two, I guess it's, it should be at its peak. It was like two months ago, and it's really, really good for PvP. Yeah, Zapdos is pretty... Maybe 1.7 mil. It's nothing super crazy. If it was 2 mil plus, that'd be way more impressive, honestly. But, but it's not cheap for a legendary. I think all, most other ones are like, are like 800k. Like I'm sure Moltres is like eight, 500k. Okay, wow. I did not expect it to be that cheap. Articuno. Um, 400k? Okay, wow. In comparison, that's pretty wild. Uh, do you think... Do you think useless legendaries will eventually drop to a point where hunting them isn't even worth it anymore? Since they may be subject dude hunting legendaries for profit is already horribly not worth it like horrendously not worth it um i'm pretty sure it's less than 50k an hour like you should you should never for those who don't know you should never ever 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 be hunting legendaries for profit it's ridiculously bad pokey per hour ridiculously bad 
Um, we can look to like Articuno and, and uh, Maltrace right now. Actually, even with Zapdos, let's go best case scenario. Even Zapdos is not worse for the profit per hour. It's horrible. Um, I'm pretty sure. Let's double check. It might be that. Yeah, let's see. Let's see Zapdos. So we don't know the rate of legendary. It's somewhere between one out of one out of two thousand, I believe, one out of one thousand, and one out of eight thousand. If I had to guess, I would guess it's somewhere in that one out of five to six k range, maybe like four to six k. So let's. I'm gonna call the average and say five k. Let's just for the sake of this video, for the sake of this calculation, say that five k is the rate of the legendary. One out of five k encounters. We don't know this. This is we don't we don't know the encounter rate. They haven't released it yet, so it's this is speculation. Uh, it's somewhere between there. That's the average. Let's take that. So 5,000 divided by the like 300, 280 encounters. Let's go peak efficiency. 300 encounters you could do per hour. So on average, you're going to get a legendary every like 16, 17 hours, right? So if you're hunting a legendary for profit, right? Best case scenario, um, you, you sell it, you know, you get a, you get Zapdos in 16 hours. Let's say best case scenario, you get Zapdos in 16 hours. It's worth 1.6 mil. You divide that by 16. It's 100k an hour. That's horrible. You could payday pick up and make more money than this. Like like 50% more money. 100k an hour is really, really bad as a money making method. Um, some of the like most consistent slash like, like pretty much bottom of the barrel money making methods like 150. You probably should never be doing anything under 150k an hour. Usually, it depends. Obviously, if it's fun for you, do whatever's fun for you. If you enjoy it, obviously go for it. But in terms of an efficiency thing, like you probably shouldn't be doing stuff 150k or lower. Um, now, screw efficiency, efficiency if you enjoy it. I do things like making mediocre competitive Pokemon. That's probably not worth it, but yeah. Um, yeah, hunting legendaries for profit is hyper, hyper not worth. For sure, for sure. You should only be hunting legendaries if you want an OT caught legendary, which is what I want, personally. Or if you're just like single encounter shiny hunting or like or like catching other Pokemon for profit and you kind of just it's like a passive goal you just go for it along the way if you're hard going for a legendary just to sell it for profit i once again really don't recommend it if it's fun for you keep going you know king queen person who cares right person of royalty um but financially and efficiency wise it's horrible uh thoughts on allowing converting legendaries into prismatic pearls i love the idea I Xanarchy, you and me, same wavelength. Like, we need a legendary sync, 100%. And whether that's... Now, should the should they be consumed for prismatic pearls, or should they be consumed for, like, the elemental orbs slash rainbow quills? I think that becomes the question. I and mean, the issue is elemental orbs... Actually, they're kind of up there in price, honestly. <clears throat> that's not bad. I, I feel like, like... It makes more mechanical sense to turn them into rainbow quills slash elemental orbs, but at the same time, I don't, like... I feel like that floods the market of this item. Like Rainbow Quills are already 4k a piece. So that that's the tough part of that, but obviously like mechanical wise it'd be like more be more congruent, is that the word? Like make more sense if they were consumed for those items. But I I could see the argument for prismatic pearls, but it worries me a little with like the shiny market. I I'm I'm all up once again, I'm all up for some sort of sinking of the legendaries. The legendaries absolutely need to be destroyed. <laughs> aggressive statement but they have to be destroyed somehow to, to keep you know the supply in check oh for legendary lures i like whoa i do that's one of the cooler ideas bep um ooh, if you could consume them to get some amount of legendary lures now what amount would be correct is the question that's interesting that is interesting imagine if you could consume them for there's 67 k piece Let's do like 500k. It'd be cool if they made it so a legendary was always worth at least 500k. So you do like 500k divided by 67k. Make it so they give you like seven legendary lures. If you consume a legendary, it gives you like five to seven. That's that's pretty cool. That'd be pretty neat, honestly. What if you buy all legendaries and release them on video? Yeah, that would surely help the market at the cost of my wallet. You're not wrong. Once I got my Johto alt, I'll be doing 7 mil a week on the Ho-Oh fight. The Ho-Oh fight is one of the most underrated PVM activities right now. Um, and I feel like it's because it's like not super solved. Or I feel like that the guides and strategies that are out on it are kind of outdated. Or there's not really like an easy strat for it. Um, I know for the red fight, the easy strat is like the Murkrow Sucker Punch thing. Or yeah, Honchrow Sucker Punch, right? Um, I would love to. Once again, my I'm in like my PVM era. Leading up to raids... I'm going to try to learn as many other PVM activities as possible before raids are permanently released, which includes the advanced Jimmy Run strat, maybe the Red Refight, and then the Red Refight and the Ho-Oh fight. I'm going to try to learn. I'm going to try to learn all these. 
My hoe guide is up to date, extremely easy, and very cheap to build. Well, there you go. Check out Cav on YouTube. I didn't know that. I'll have to I'll have to check it out, dude. Um, that that'd be huge. This will be the last horde I have to do for special attack, which is super nice. I'm gonna have to go find a fun speed horde to do where I don't mind getting the shiny on. Kind of thinking about Polyworld, but even then, kind of a common shiny. I feel like I can do better. But there is 2v2 special attack on everything. Now, I would not do 2v2 special attack on this Deano if it was plus special attack nature. This needs very specific stats once again. But since it's naive, I actually can go max EVs on this. I always forget what EV training spots I want to go to. I should like write down. I should have a notepad document to where I like write down EV training. Because like going back to Lantern would be so good. I I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to get shuddy lantern lantern and moral are two like hp ev training spots i should go back to for sure in the future all right but right now i'm focused on speed evs let me try to actually find something for that that works for me i feel like at this point i might just end up doing polywhirl yeah because i'm like yeah it's like there's there, there's so many hp options for hordes there's actually so few speed speed ev options i feel like maybe i'm just dumb and i'm missing them but I feel like it's pretty slim. Obviously, I know a lot of them, guys. I know, like, Linoon, Golbat. You could do Voltorb, I guess, kind of. Um, we, we, went, we went over a bunch of the basic options, but I'm not really finding any really cool shinies that I need um, that I could also speed EV train at. That's kind of the problem that I'm running into. I feel like there's just not that many, actually. Wait, I could go... Wait, that actually might be worth... Is Joltik speed or special attack? Ooh, okay, that's worth... That's very funny. Um, the, uh, it's it's only going to be five EVs per horde, but this is a Lepa hunt that is like, I'm going to have to spend so much time at anyway, because it's, I think this is the spot where it's um nine out of 10 hordes, you're going to see Joltik and like one out of 10, you're going to see Tynamo. And I, dude, Electros is one of the, I've talked about it a lot recently on stream. One of the coolest shinies in Pokemon, dude. It's such a beautiful shiny and it's so rare nowadays. It's become hyper rare due to the due to the horde changes so yeah i'm down to go over to that spot it's over in univa i'll show you guys how to get there this is a this is a great shiny hunt great location you go mistralton city you head into the cave i'm gonna pop in the pc really quick you're gonna need lepas for the spot because it's like kind of deep ish in the cave not really but i'm gonna jump in the cave i'm gonna pop a rappel why not we're gonna head over here over to the staircase head down and then head down one more time i love this spot and then right here is joltik Slash Tyn oh, Tynamo first horde. Very lucky. Very good to see. So if I can luckily somehow happen to get a shiny Tynamo here, or even a Joltik, I would love, 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 love. Either of these Pokemon being shiny would be, would make me extremely, extremely happy. So we'll see what happens today. We'll see if we have that, uh, <laughs> that factor luck in store today. That, that X factor, one might say. Check out factor link down below. Anyways, I'm going to see you guys after a bunch of EV training here. Okay, I want to quickly say, I don't shout out every person who sends me a gift via mail, because I don't want to, like, I don't want people to send me stuff just to get shouted out. This guy sent me one of, like, my favorite gifts. And it's a very simple gift, which is cute to me. Um, so, Diploic, King of, very nice, obviously. Um, I sent him, like, a thank you, because this was, I love this stuff. Um, this thing belongs in a Pat UT roster, sniped it for 5k, felt like it may have had a competitive history. Look at this, Adamant Relicanth. Nothing fancy. It, this is not a crazy, like, Adamant Relicanth, just 20 plus in every stat. 24, like, not a fancy Pokemon by any means. Adamant Nature. Eevee trained in a pretty specific way, though, which is interesting. And then 2016. Also, Wild Caught. So this was, yeah, this was Wild Caught 2016. I love this. I, I love Pokemon. Like, I love old competitive Pokemon. If you have weird, not so good, old competitive Pokemon from like 2013, 2014, I, that stuff is very, very, very cool to me. That stuff is very, very, very cool to me. Uh, why is he using Pikachu to shiny hunt? Pikachu is awesome here. I'm using him to EV train because Pikachu gets sweet scent and then he also gets surf and discharge. So you can use him to summon the horde and then also kill the horde, which saves you a slot in your party, right? Which is super, super good. Um, as a, so I can EV train five Pokemon with Pikachu versus four if I were to use like another horde killing Pokemon and, and a sweet scent Pokemon. Why don't you evolve to Raichu? Raichu is pretty much worse than Pikachu almost always. Um, the benefits of Raichu are that you get more bulk for the, for the sake of you lose damage, right? Which may sound unintuitive. So with Raichu, you have better bulk and even then it's bulk, you're trading bulk for, for what, right? I guess more speed, I think. Um, 110 speed, 80 special defense, 55, 60 HP is a terrible bulk versus with Pikachu. Now, the reason why you see 55 attack, 
and 50 special attack, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not extra damage. Light Ball is one of the most powerful items in all of Pokemon. It doubles Pikachu's attack and special attack, so it actually turns this into a 110 base attack and a 100 base special attack versus Raichu's 90 and 90. So you actually do more damage with Pikachu, which is way more important on a frail Pokemon like this versus having that extra... Um, What's it called? Defenses. Pikachu is way better than Raichu in almost every way. Pikachu is a legitimate NU threat with, like, fake out extreme speed. Um, Pikachu is a legitimate NU Pokemon, whereas Raichu is, like, useless and bad. It's like, yeah. Um, doubles the numeric stat. Yeah, that. so that is true. I was trying to explain it in an easier way, Rainer, but that is true. So what Rainer is saying is it does technically double the, double the numeric stat, not the base stat, so it's even more damage is, what, is why that's important. So, like... If you have a, it's like it matters with the EVs and the IVs, like all of these, this stat is what gets doubled, which is what's, so it's even more than just the double. So yeah, Pikachu does way more damage than Raichu, and that's way, way more important than the slight bulk. The speed is nice, obviously, but yeah, Pikachu with Light Ball is almost always better than Raichu. How do I get Vault Tackle on Pikachu? It's one of the most annoying moves to get, man. It's a, it's a egg move, kind of. You have to breed Pikachu with a Light Orb on it. That's what you do. So let's say I would I would get Vault Tackle before you put before you put any IVs before you make your Pikachu good at all. What I would do is I would go get a shitty Pikachu, get a Light Ball, consume it, breed it with whatever, put Vault Tackle on it, and then that egg move will carry over. I'm pretty sure as you uh, as you breed it up with IVs. But yeah, Pikachu's move set is one of the more expensive ones to actually get because you need it's a great competitive Pokemon. You need Vault Tackle, which is like that weird little egg move. You need Extreme Speed, which is a BP move. So you need BP to actually get the ideal Pikachu move set. And then you need like Fake Out, which is a tutor. And um And then you can either go like, probably Vault Switch. You can go Vault Switch, you can go Grass Knot. There's a couple different options on that final slot. Wait a minute. I don't know if I've ever seen this. Wait, thanks for telling me that, Menace Eagle. Um Aerodactyl does have access to its hidden ability Unnerve, but doesn't show it in the Pokedex. I've never seen that. I've not I've seen like hidden ability access Pokemon have hidden ability access, but then like not have the ability. That's a that's a little bug, a small bug, but like it's good to know. Yeah, whoever whoever if you're curious, you can get Unnerve. Not that it super matters, I guess, on Aerodactyl. If you're looking for what Pokemon have access to hidden ability in Pokemon, usually I always say the best way to check is Pokedex. And it usually is, but you might want to double check on the GTL for stuff like Aerodactyl then apparently, because I would have never thought. That's so interesting. Good to know. So check both places. Drudagon as well. Yeah, but does Drudagon say in the Pokedex? It doesn't either. What? So it seems like a bunch of the mysterious Cherish Ball hidden ability access Pokemon don't say in the Pokedex. That is awkward. Mold Breaker is a great ability. I feel like you'd probably just prefer Rough Skin on Drudagon, but I don't know. You can do like Choice Band, Mold Breaker, Drudagon though now. That's kind of, you know, people always expect it to be full tank. But would you go Mold Breaker over Sheer Force? You'd probably go Sheer Force, right? If you're going, if you're going all damage strategy. But it's a cool surprise factor. I don't know. Kind of neat. We're at 200 EVs now, which is about 205 I guess, after this, which is pretty going pretty solid pace. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh yeah, I don't know if I've just been lucky here, but I've been getting way more Tynamos than I would expect. I'm currently sitting at like 180 Joltik and 50 Tynamo. What's the ratio on that? It's not the 90-10 that I thought it was, but obviously it's a very small pool of Pokemon as well. So very small. Like, I haven't really tested it for that many encounters, you know, um, wouldn't call this quote unquote data, right? Uh, but it is interesting. Like that's a lot better than I thought it was, which is at least hopeful. All right, but there it is, boys. 2v2 two for the Detective new Speed. EV training is done on these five Pokemon. Oh, that feels super good. Now we still have more to do. We still have, I'm going to buy some more escape ropes. We still have more to do. I'm, I have one more Pokemon to EV train. What's left? The coughing. I think this thing needs 252 attack and 252 speed. Since this thing needs attack or speed, can't I just stay at Joltik, honestly? I might just do that. So let me go ahead and uh, we're going to train some other Pokemon with it, though, to make sure we get full value. So let me go ahead and um, what other UTs do I have that need 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed? This needs to be rebred. This needs to be rebred. Um, this one might need a special attacker. This needs attack and HP. What needs 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed in my boxes? This, the pincer. Yep, we can do that. That needs to be rebred. These are all EV trained, I believe. That's a special attacker, I guess. I'll look around for a little. I actually don't have that many Pokemon that need 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed. I actually might have to buy some, which is really funny. 
Very, very, very funny. Actually, wait. You want to know something hilarious? I think this Pokemon needs 252 attack and 252 speed. This is the slammer, ladies and gentlemen. An absolute meme comp that I want to build that is going to be a jolly Bronzong <laughs> that goes heavy slam. The, the goal is jolly Bronzong, 252 attack, 252 speed, and then you just heavy slam, and that's it. So stupid. Should be very fun. Should be horrible, but it should be fun. Okay, after browsing through my mail for a bit, I've got this uh, Glidegar, which needs 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed, it's offensive nature, so we're gonna go 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed. This Mankey, which I'm so, I'm so hyped for a Primeape comp. The Slammer, this Pinsir. This is the Pinsir? Wait, no, this isn't the Pinsir, actually. There was a Moxie Pinsir that I made that is what got me that horrible, dreaded Shiny Pelipper. My most hated Shiny because of that. But anyways, I think we're ready, guys. Let's go ahead and just go 2v2 attack, 2v2 speed, EV train. We're going to start off with uh, with speed. We're all healed up. We're going to head back to the little Tynamo Joltik spot and get to EV training some more. The scary thing is, once I'm done EV training here, I'm going to have to go XP train for such a long time. It's going to be ridiculous. And the scary thing about that is um, I'm like... I'm gonna I'm probably gonna get like a shiny Dodrio or a shiny Dawn fan, which to be fair would not be the worst thing in the world It kind of sucks. I just I would really like to not get a times five horde shiny after single encountering for so much I feel like it always happens to me um, Where I go for rares for like 40,000 encounters and then I get a times five. It just always happens um, But I would be decently happy with I do want one of those shinies or both of them at some point It's, it's just that spot is so much better It's so good for XP that I feel like it'd be a crime to go XP train somewhere else and have that shine. Like, I could go, like, Cerulean Cave and go for, like, Lickitung slash Wobbuffet. That is pretty good XP. But I feel like the XP at Dodrio Dawn Fan is just so ridiculous. It's so much better. It's so ridiculous. It'd be a crime not to. So, I'm going to have to just risk it. And I'm not going to be happy risking it. I'm not going to lie. I will never forgive the Pokemon devs for nerfing Shiny Ditto. I will say. So, with Shiny Ditto, if Shiny Ditto transforms into a Pokemon, you don't see a Shiny version of it. But you used to. If you, it was like back like two years ago. If you had a shiny Ditto, you technically owned like every shiny because you could like transform into any Pokemon and it would transform into the shiny variant, which is so freaking cool. Um, it was so 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 very cool. Um, like one of the coolest screenshots I've talked about it many times before, but one of the coolest screenshots I've seen in Pokemon is someone who got at the who got the Rayquaza. And then they had a shiny Smeargle with Transform and a shiny Ditto. So, and it was a triple battle. So it was shiny Smeargle on the left transformed into shiny Rayquaza, normal Rayquaza in the middle, and then shiny Ditto transformed into shiny Rayquaza on the right. It was one of the coolest screenshots of like a triple battle of a player being shiny Rayquaza, Rayquaza, shiny. And that was, that was one of the only ways you could get was, or get screenshots or see like the shiny variants of legendaries. So the shiny variants of those like King of the Hill legends are implemented into the game, but you can't i think they're shiny locked for whatever reason it's very very interesting yeah what are alphas at what are alpha spindas at right now i feel like alpha spinda spawns are one of those alphas where it's like if you have alt accounts the money you can make is disgusting if the cheapest alpha spinda is 140k if you have like five alt accounts with access to that alpha spinda spawn that's a lot right but that would be 140k times five you probably catch them all in like 30 minutes like the money per hour would be ridiculous alt accounts are so good it, it is truly insane like there are certain things like that like having a bunch of alt accounts for certain activities like that is is ridiculously phenomenal i'm pretty sure i actually need assurance on my wheezing explosion assurance does that say incinerate what okay um didn't expect to need incinerate, so I'm going to keep that move. I guess to destroy some of the berries on certain... That's so interesting. I live for a day where things like incinerate is actually a useful move, dude. That's... So, what a utility. Incinerate's a fire-type move, like 60 base power, I believe, that uh, burns up a berry. Yeah, burns up a berry and becomes... That's so crazy. That's so interesting. 
Dude, I'm really surprised more people don't speedrun Pokemon Fairy. I think the storyline with its really unique difficulty, I think it would make for like really interesting and unique routes. I feel like there is so much potential for Pokemon speedruns. I've thought about doing it for a long time, but I'd love to get to it. If I just time it, I have so many ideas for content. It's all about time and energy. It's really just like having the time and energy to get to everything. Um, I would love to get to speedrunning Pokemon at some point and doing Kanto probably or Unova. Um, that would be. It would it'd be so it'd be a great tool for people to be able to like try to speed run for alt accounts as well and get those alt accounts done. Um, it would be phenomenal. Wait, this I actually love this move. Storm throw is this what I'm thinking of? No, no, no. I'm thinking of circle throw. Um, not many Pokemon have access to this move though, but it's one of my it's one of the coolest moves in Pokemon. Yeah, circle throw. Circle throw is a it's like it's just Dragon Tail. It's just Dragon Tail for fighting types, but I feel like only like throw has like, no one has access to it. Um, but it's a negative six priority move that it hits 60 base power, fighting type, physical, and when it hits 90% accuracy, when it hits the opposing Pokemon, it like switches, it switches them on out. Cool in randoms, dude, circle throw and dragon tail are both so good in randoms because, um, you get more information. Having to like force your opponent to like see their Pokemon is so good. Getting that information from them is so, so powerful. But yeah, Polyrath gets Circle Throw. That's really, really cool. Yo, Pat, this bot 20% time. I thought it was 1090, but I think it's better than I thought. I don't know what... So what's the math on this? We've done around... What is that? Around 500 encounters total. Around 500 encounters total. And it's 4 to 1. So yeah, that is, that is like 8 to 2, right? I think that's the math. So yeah, I think this spot is 80% Joltik, 20% Tynamo, which is better than I thought. I thought it might have been the one like 90-10, like, because Tynamo in the Pokedex is very rare, which is scary, because it could be like, there's a single encounter, they were trying to match this, and that's, that's terrifying, you know? Ooh, that is speed EV training done for these bad boys, and I'm going to find a good attack EV training spot. Let me get out of this cave really quick. Uh, and all of these just need attack as well, so I don't, I don't even have to switch anything up, which is super nice. Let's go find a good spot for a good shiny. I feel like I just go do the Arbok slash Primeape spot in Kanto. I just need Lepos. I have plenty of Lepos. Um, I feel like that's the spot I probably go do, but let me... I could do like times three Zangoose, but that's too ridiculous. I'm going to go test a weird spot. I'm going to go test a very strange spot, but this is also like the best times three Horde spot in the entire game. Um, I'm going to see what Pokemon are active in it right now, and I might do this spot. It might be... It's really inefficient, but... A great shiny hunting spot that I want to do anyway. And I don't do times three hordes that much. I feel like I usually do like times fives or singles. I feel like I do times three hordes probably the least out of any. I feel like I've probably spent less time at times three hordes than egg hunting. But this spot. So here I can kill Zangoose. Oh, it has C dot. I thought it was Nuzleaf to be fair. C dot's probably attacked still, right? Oh no, it's defense. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to kill these. Man, if the only mons I can kill are like Saviper and Zangoose, I, so I can kill Saviper. I'm pretty sure they give attack. Let's double check. Or not? No, I can't kill these. Oh man. Okay, so it might uh, this spot might not be doable. If I'm just skipping all these Pokemon, yeah, this is not doable. Oh dude, I'm so glad I thought of this spot. Wait, where's a so wait wait? I actually would love to do a sock. This would be a this would be a fantastic shiny to hunt for um times five hordes. Because we need this still in Team Mister. Okay, so I think Sock should be over here. What a weird location. I've never... I don't know if I've ever... I've, like, maybe never been over here. What a crazy location. Here's the first Sock. How, what's the... So what are the other... What's the other horde? Is it just 100... There's no way it's 100% Sock here, right? Oh, my... No, they have Sturdy. Okay, that's really annoying. Um, I could... Okay, I could still do Sock. But I need to bring a Mold Breaker Pokemon probably, and then get a Sweet Set Mon and just EV train four Pokemon. That's probably fine. Before let's just check what um, let's check what Mons are here first. Sock and let's see what else. And Throw, that would be perfect because I already have my Straggy. So if it's Sock and Throw here, that'd be super good for me. It's Sock Throw and Marowak. What? There's a Ma really Marowak being here would be crazy. Let's see. I don't know why I would just never expect that. I don't know why it's so... It is so crazy. I don't know. Crazy to me. Ref, yeah, what the... It's it's so weird that these guys always have, like, the trio hordes. Where it's, like, sock, throw, and scrap. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I really hope I don't get a duplicate Marowak. That would really suck. 
Wait, okay. If this spot, to be fair, if this spot is tr a trio of hordes anyway, I should just go to the Route 18 one. Just like, I don't need Lepas there. So I 100% should go to Route 18. Okay. Um, but I'm still going to need... If I go to route, the plan is, go to Route 18, get a Mold Breaker Pokemon, and a, a different Sweet Sun Mon. I'm going to have to sacrifice for the time being and just not EV train one of these. Ugh, I'm sorry. The Slammer is going to get put on hold. He's just not that <laughs> useful. Um, we're going to grab a Mold Breaker. What do we want to grab? I mean, any... I can oh, my Shiny! Why not? Okay, this route is really annoying to get to. But it's also one of the coolest routes because you don't need lepas. It has a, a house you can talk to and interact with to heal. This is, like, this is like legitimately one of the most unique shiny hunting spots in all of Pokemon, unironically. Ooh, which one is it? It's, I think it's the bottom one. If I'm, I've been here a lot, but I haven't been here in a long time. Right, okay, perfect. You go up here. You bike up here. It's a long way. There's a Pokeball down that I've never grabbed. And then right here, you walk into this house and then talk to this lady. I think this lady, or is it this lady? She'll heal you. Including your PP, which most heals like this in Pokemon don't heal your PP. And you sit here, and you do times three hordes, and it should be... At nighttime, I think it's straggy only. But, during the day and morning, it's sock, throw, and straggy. And I think all of these give attack EVs, correct? So I actually can just go ahead and kill all of them, I'm pretty sure. I don't even have to like... Okay, protect is really annoying though. But I don't even have to, uh, like, not kill any of the hordes, which is super nice. Yeah, there we go. But a throw does give HP, actually, so I will have to not kill the throw hordes. This is, this is so awkward. I probably should just do, like, an easier EV trading spot. But I don't know, man. I want to have that shiny sock chance for, uh, for good old Team Mister. Oh, U-turn on Primeape is actually huge. That's a great move to learn. I'm actually so glad you brought this up, show. I would, I think I understand what you're saying. Did the 10-year players get anything for playing the game for 10 years in 2022? There was an anniversary event, but I would love, if they introduced some sort of, like, veteran cape, like how, like, RuneScape 3 has, that would be super sick. Yeah, like the CSGO 10-year veteran coin, uh, I would love for, that's an easy little reward that I would absolutely love Pokemon to add, a 10-year veteran cape or some sort of veteran that would be super sick. Yes, I would love that in Pokemon. It does not exist. Would love it, love it, love it. All right, but that is 252 attack on all the Pokemon. The main one being the Weezing is now fully EV trained. 252 attack, 252 speed. All of my gym run Pokemon are EV trained and ready to go. They just need to be XP trained. And we have a lot. I'm going to have to XP train for a long time, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's actually going to take like quite a a while but that's where i'm gonna call it for today we spent one stream doing breeding one stream doing ev training i didn't expect this to be a whole stream of ev training so i apologize and we'll have to do another stream of uh of XP training, and then eventually we'll actually start learning the routes and testing it out. So thank you guys so much for watching. I super, super, super appreciate it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed today's video and today's stream. Thank you for the Factor for sponsoring it. Make sure to like the video in the stream, dislike if not. Check out the Factor link down in the description. Uh, if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel, YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, PayPal, Switch Demo, help out dramatically. Um, and yeah, subscribe on Twitch, follow on or follow on Twitch, subscribe on YouTube. You guys know. Just have a great day. Have fun. At the end of the day, play Pokemon, enjoy yourself, relax a little have a great day eat some good food see you guys peace over now yo what's up i just want to quickly say thank you so much for watching the entire video that's very very cool of you and it's even cooler for all of these people to go above and beyond and support my content i couldn't do it without you thank you so much again